and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World with me, John Jordan. So in this video, I'm having a, another look at uh, Niftex. I think that's how you pronounce it, <laughs> NFTX, um, as you can see. Um, so what this is, pretty experimental, but pretty cool in a, a very blockchain, is this is a way of um, splitting up, uh, bringing fractional ownership to NFTs. So um, what are NFTs? NFTs are non-fungible tokens. They're these uh, effectively, typically game items, uh, characters or something like that um, that are in a blockchain game. They are uh, traded on marketplaces um, and they are unique. Um, <clears throat> one of the issues, however, is with the very expensive NFTs, um, this is particularly some of the uh, some of the land-based uh, NFTs in projects like um, De uh, Decentraland, and crypto voxel and places like that so these are these uh they're kind of like games but they're more like kind of um kind of second life type um kind of uh, persistent uh, metaverses or whatever you want to call them um, and some of these lands there's been a lot of speculation at least around that the value of these lands we'll see how, how it pans out in future but quite a lot of money's changed hands on them but once you've say spent you know 100 eth or something like that buying some buying some land and uh, maybe you can do some economic activity in those things, rent them out or something. But but there's um you basically sunk that money in, and, and until you kind of can sell that NFT on, um, there's no real way of uh, or it's not very clear ways of of, of kind of uh, earning um, kind of interest from that or earning uh, kind of a revenue flow from that. So this uh, website is a way of thinking around how we would do that. So it's very early at the moment, so um, you know, not even I suppose beta, alpha, that sort of thing. Um, but what we can see here is that these the people, this is, this is te to kind of testing, but people have created, um, have taken their NFTs that they own in their, in their Ethereum wallet and then they've um, put them onto this site as kind of like an auction, really. So we can see here at the moment, um, we've got the, these two are the only live ones. So this is um, some land in Decentraland. Um, it's valued at 10 ETH, so not, it's not particularly expensive, this one. Um, but this is, I say, for more for testing. And they've broken it down into uh, 10,000 shards. So if you want to, you could go in um, and uh, <clears throat> you could see, uh, actually, you know, this one's awaiting the NFT transfer from the owner. So we can't do this one. No, we can't do anything on this one yet because they've not transferred it into the system. But if they did, we can see here there's going to be um, 4,400 shards available out of the total of 10,000. So the person who owns this um, obviously still has the majority. You still have to control the majority of the, of the um, shards that you're creating. You're basically breaking down this one F NFT into shards. This is the price. Um, per shard uh, based on the valuation and how many shards you've got um, and then people can, can, can buy them from that. So I've actually done this bef uh, previously with this one here, the um, Vice City um, land. So this one's finished now, you can't, you can't um, the kind of auction's finished. So um, the valuation was 10.2 ETH um, and actually I've claimed my shards, so you can see here I've claimed it. And but effectively what's happened here is this NFT has been um, kind of locked into a contract and then and then part of it fractions of it have been broken down and made into ERC20 tokens so those are the standard Ethereum tokens um, like like the BAT token or um, like wrapped, e uh, wrapped Bitcoin or, or DAI or any of these things are, are um, uh, kind of ERC20 tokens and obviously tokens can be exchanged um, through any exchange. So what we've got here in, in, um, in uh, NFTX um, we have the shard exchange as we can see here um, if you've played around with any DeFi uh, DAPS. This is uh, this is just the standard uh, Uniswap um, exchange uh, uh, interface. So Uniswap is a decentralized open source um, exchange. Effectively, it's actually a, a liquidity provider. Um, but what's nice about it and why it's become the most popular um, way of a decentralized way of, of swapping tokens is anyone can set these things up. Anyone can add their own liquidity pool. Um, they can add their own. Effectively, that means they can add their own token. Um, so it just provides, basically, it just provides a way of, of, um, of for people to buy and sell. Um, it's, it's an automatic way um, of, of buying and selling, and always making sure that the price is, is kind of is kind of matching. Um, so um, we can go here. So um, we can see here that this is the uh, Vice City shards. So I have a hundred Vice City shards. This is what that's what I, I, I bid for. So that was um, zero point one ETH that I spent, um, and I now have. Um, 100, I own 100 of those of the shards of that NFT, if that kind of makes any sense. So if I wanted to, um, and I don't know if anyone would, would um, how much liquidity there is, but um, I've got 100 of those so I could sell, um, I could say I want to sell my um, 100 Vice uh, City shards, that's what we were calling them, 
by City Shards here. Um, so I would, if I wanted to do that, I'd have to unlock the tokens. That's why it's showing in red, because you have to um, unlock the token so the smart contract can process it. Um, what we can see here, if I did do that, I would get 0. Point, excuse me, 0. 0.08 ETH. Now, as I spent 0. 0.1 ETH, um, obviously that wouldn't be a very good investment. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to do that at the moment. I mean, I, I don't do this thing, this kind of stuff to make money. It's more to see kind of how it works. Um, but from that point of view, it, it seems... Um, that uh, it is working. There's been a few kind of technical glitches. Um, I think that's mainly been to to do with the very high ETH gas price that's been recently. So it's been, um, I think, just the system's been clogged. Um, so kind of uh, it's not, not been quite clear what's been going through. So I actually had a, had to have a few attempts to um, uh, kind of claim my shards, but now we can see I've got them. And equally, if I wanted to, um, some of these other ones, the after party shards or the, so obviously because this. Um, this, this is the Uniswap uh, instance within Shard Exchange. What they're doing here, the tokens that they are showing, are the tokens that are on their platform. So these are the um, the NFTs that have been broken into into small shards. And then, so if I wanted to buy the Mystic Balloon Axie shards, I could, um, I could you know I could put in that um, zero point one ETH, and I would get three of these of these shards. Um, getting a warning about high slippage I mean, this is kind of the the other issue when you're kind of doing this sort of thing is um uh, slippage is just it's just the price changes it's effectively it's saying there's low there's low liquidity there's not there's not really 0 0.1 ETH of liquidity in the system um so so the price the price changes i'm i'm, I'm getting less um even even with 0 0.1 ETH i'm getting um price slippage down so i mean that's kind of will be one of the issues for this sort of thing that um you're breaking down these um, well, certainly in this case, you're breaking down these low-value uh, NFTs. So there's, there's no there's no rule point kind of um, uh, people owning them. But if you had some of these NFTs that are all worth a hundred, a thousand, you know, um, ETH, then then there would probably be a lot more um, activity around that. And also, it does allow it does allow for these projects like Decentraland, where people um, are now sitting on a lot of land and probably don't want to start selling off, but but maybe they're in, interested in, in ways of just getting revenue streams out. Um, so, so it's an interesting, pro uh, interesting proposition. As with a lot of things on the blockchain, it's not, it's not clear. It's, uh, technically, I think it works. It's not going to, not clear economically that it's providing a very interesting um, niche. It seems like it is, but we obviously have to wait and see. And um, what we may find out is it works particularly well for certain types of projects and not so well for others. So maybe Axie Infinity. I, I, I don't know. I mean, the other thing we, we uh, thinking about it. A, a, a nice thing you could do here is it would be a way of um, communally owning things. So you could have kind of kind of um, big uh, people with lots of crypto buying something for a group of other people, and then and then um, and then kind of sharing that that uh, um, uh, kind of asset. And also, it's a, a bit like if you think about companies and people owning shares in companies, it does um, allow for people to um, kind of pull money together and then buy and sell that fractional ownership um, and and and. Have a small, have a very small amount of ownership, and then buy and sell that out um, uh, in, in a way that's kind of harder to do with with um, uh, in the real world when you just have shares and you can't really sell them out, and, and it, it all gets a bit messy. So I think there's some interesting things that, that could come out of this, um, but early days yet. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Um, this is Blockchain Gaming World, where we kind of dive straight into the, uh, the world of blockchain and how it's impacting games. I think it's totally fascinating. Um, lots of experimentation. Uh, not so, not so much um, kind of traction at the moment, but uh, I'm sure it will come in the coming months and years. So stick, stick with us. Um, do subscribe to the channel. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.